guys, it's Emily, and today I'm starting my second weekly vlog for the Owl's Magical Readathon. So if you missed my first weekly vlog, I will link that up here so you guys can check it out if you haven't already. I just finished uploading it, so if you haven't watched it yet, go do that. You'll see what I read last week and the progress that I've made with my TBR as of now. But today is Monday, April 8th, and it's currently like 3.30 p.m. Like, I know I'm starting this vlog super late, but this morning I was mostly like editing and exporting and uploading my first weekly vlog. It took a bit longer than I had anticipated, so I've been spending most of my morning doing that. And then I went and had lunch with my aunt, uncle, and cousin who came to visit us, like my dad and I. Um, we were available for lunch, so we decided to go meet them at the mall and just have lunch together. And well, when I came home, my vlog still wasn't done uploading, so I finished that. I've been watching also some YouTube videos, but now I need to get some reading done because it's 3.30 and I haven't read a single page as of yet. So this week I will be starting Vicious by V.E. Schwab. Uh, this is my pick for Transfiguration, which is a book with a red cover or sprayed edges and Vicious as a red cover. And I wasn't planning on reading this just yet because I am in the middle of Once Upon a Dream by Liz Braswell. This is my pick for my Ancient Runes exam. But this book is due on Tuesday, no Thursday, to, tomorrow is Tuesday. So this book is due on Thursday at the library and I cannot renew it because my friend Audrey, who might be watching this video, hey Audrey, but um, she's reserved it after me so I won't be able to renew it. So I just thought that it was time for me to get started with this one. Um, this book has like 360 pages or something like that. I thought it was thicker than that. But yeah, I know nothing about the premise of this book, but I know it's a very beloved book on booktube and in the bookish community. So I just thought that I would start reading this, see what the hype is all about. And right now we're just gonna get started reading this, but I'm very excited to be honest. I don't know, I think I'm gonna like this one. This is adult fantasy, or I'm not sure if it's fantasy, but I know it's adult fiction, so I'm excited to check it out. Happy Tuesday. So I know I didn't really update you guys. I feel like there's a big glare because of my laptop, but it provides some great lighting. We're gonna live with that. <laughs> Where was I? Uh, yeah, I didn't really update you guys last night and that's simply because honestly, I didn't really read much. I made it to page though. 51 of Vicious and it's under a pile of other things so I won't show it to you guys but I made a bit of progress with it and so far I'm intrigued. That's the only thing that I'll say because I don't really have any specific thoughts as of yet. We're still in the very early stages of the book so I don't really have anything to note but it sounds interesting like that's all I'll say and I love the fact that there's like a dual timeline meaning that we have the past like 10 years ago and then we have the present and I cannot wait for those two timelines to converge but as of now it's very intriguing I love the formatting of the book like the way that each chapter is done does that make sense I just I really love the pacing of the story and I feel like the chapters are really short so it makes for a very quick read but right now I'm gonna watch a bit more booktube and then prepare lunch and then we'll get ready to read Wow, what a great angle. Love that for me. But I made it to page 128 of Vicious by V.E. Schwab. And I've reached a point now where I'm not intrigued, but I'm like, oh my god, I cannot put this down anymore. Like, you know, I'm actually very invested in the story now. We reached a point where, I don't know, like the timelines sort of merge. Like we understand more what is going on. And I'm like, oh my god. I love this so much. Um, I I really love the gray, like the fact that we play with the gray area, like the being good versus being bad and morality and just, I don't know. And the fact that we read from Victor's perspective is like very interesting. And I'm also realizing now that I never gave you guys a plot for this. So I'm just going to read you like a little summary that, where's my bookmark? I don't want to lose where I'm at. <laughs> Give me a sec. Yeah, I'm just gonna get, read you guys a little summary of like the book because honestly, I'm re I'm like absolutely terrible at giving you guys summaries. You probably have seen that by now in my previous videos, but let's read this. So it says, Victor and Eli started out as college roommates, brilliant, arrogant, lonely boys who recognized the same sharpness and ambition in each other. In their senior year, a shared research interest in adrenaline near-death experiences and seemingly supernatural events reveals an intriguing possibility. 
that under the right conditions, someone could develop extraordinary abilities. But when their thesis moves from the academic to the experimental, things go horribly wrong. And it's, so far it's really amazing. This is good. I, I understand the hype as of now. I don't know how this is gonna end and if I'm still gonna be thinking the same way and feeling the way that I'm currently feeling um, as I go deeper into the book. But as of now, I like it. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Do you ever get these urges to reorganize your bookshelves? Because that's what I'm in the middle of right now. Like, yeah, this is a bit of a mess, but my contemporary shelf, this is my contemporaries, it used to be over there, but it was getting a bit full, so I just moved everything over here, and it's still not the way that I want it to be, but because there's like still those that I need to integrate somehow, but yeah, I've just been wanting to reorganize everything, and now we're in this mess, so we're gonna try to like make sense of this, because I need to fit all of these books on this shelf. This is a whole process and like I don't know why I decided to start this like right now. Like I don't know what started this. I don't know what sparked this idea of me wanting to reorganize my bookshelves. I just know that the urge just got to me and I needed to respond to it. So this is what we're doing right now. I'm also watching some YouTube videos while I'm doing that. But yeah, I really don't know what got into me but now I need to do this and I'll show you guys the final result. Okay, so I didn't take any footage of me like reorganizing my shelves because I didn't know what I wanted to do with it. Well, with them actually, <laughs> but um, I have decided that this is gonna be okay for now. Uh, there's still some work to be done. I have pretty much achieved a system. <laughs> I have figured out basically what I wanna do and not all of my books are f like fitting on my shelves as of now. I don't know if that makes sense, but anyway, I'm gonna show you guys. It's gonna be easier when I show you. So over here, we have, on top we have all of my contemporaries and we have a few romans that couldn't fit on there. Eventually I want to make this part like a romance novel shelf, but you know, as of now, uh, that's gonna do because that's like my TBR pile and some of the books that were on my TBR pile uh, made it all the way over these shelves just because I wanted to see um, what it would look like with the series. I don't know if that makes sense because sometimes the first book is there and I wanted to add the second book, make sure I had a space for it. So yeah, my TBR like is still in this though. Then let's move on to this shelf right here, this bookcase. So on top we have my Harry Potter shelf, as usual, that has remained untouched. Uh, here we have my Disney slash retelling shelf. Um, I have the Apollo, like Trials of Apollo series here. Um, I don't want to keep it there, but... For now, it's going to be okay. I'm leaving it there, even though I eventually want to move it with my Percy Jackson, which is lower. I'll show you guys. But yeah, as of now, it's going to work. It's going to be fine. Um, but yeah, this is my Disney um, retelling shelf. And then we have my contemporaries. Uh, no, not contemporaries. My fantasy, sorry. So all of these are fantasy. And that's what I meant when I said, like, if I have the second book in the series, but I haven't read it. Like, Legendary used to be over on my unread pile, but... Um, now I moved it onto there. Same thing for Reaper the Gates, Fury Born. Just wanted to add this stuff there. And here it's gonna become my like uh, sci fi shelf. Those are all sci fi. Well, I don't know what about the Darkest Minds, but I'm considering it to be sci fi. And this is like my I don't know what to do with you, but it's blue so it fits. So I'm just putting it there. Uh, th you have my Percy Jackson books here, but like I said, I wanna put them with these eventually. I'll just need to figure out how to do that. And on the bottom, we still have my miscellaneous shelves, so like incomplete series and like nonfiction, poetry, that type of stuff. So now my camera battery is about to die, so we're gonna charge that, but I think I'm gonna get a little bit more reading done. I'm hoping to finish Vicious today. I don't know if that's gonna be doable, but I feel like because of the way the chapters are formatted, like because of the short chapters, I think I'm gonna be able to get that done. So hopefully that can happen and I'll keep you guys updated. Hey guys.
guys, so it's currently 8.47 p.m. and I made it to page 246 of Vicious by V. Schwab. Um, I was going to try to finish this tonight, but I'm not really in the mood to read this anymore and I don't want to push myself to finish something just for the sake of reading it, you know what I mean? I really want to enjoy my experience because I am enjoying it so far and I don't want to push myself to a point where I might not enjoy it anymore because it will feel forced. Do you know what I mean? I'm not sure if I'm making sense. But I just, I'm not in the mood to read this anymore. It's really good though. Oops. <laughs> it's really good though. I am really enjoying it. Um, now I made it to the second part of the book. And we are also reading from Eli's perspective. Which is also very interesting. Can I just say that Eli is fucking sick. And he annoys the fuck out of me. I'm sorry for swearing. But like, I think he's like God or something like that. And I just want to punch him in the face. I, I'm not a big fan of Eli. But I really love Victor though, like, I'm team Victor, by the way, I don't know if there's like teams in this, but I'm team Victor. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying this, like I said, it's really pushing the boundaries of what's good versus what's bad, and blurring the line between evil and good, so very interesting read, and I'm really surprised by how much I'm actually enjoying this. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be reading anything else at all tonight. If so, I'll make sure to keep you guys updated. I, um, I kind of want to read, but I don't know what I want to read. I'm kind of in a mood for a contemporary or like a romance, but it's not on my priority TBR for the owls, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do there. Because I just realized that out of my like owls for my librarian career are all fantasy or sci-fi which is very unlike me like I'm normally I feel like this is not focused anyway hey guys happy Wednesday so I'm about to leave for work right now it's like 10 40 and I work at 11 30 until 4 so I just thought that I would update you guys before I need to leave for work so this morning I read a bit more of Vicious by V.E. Schwab and I am currently on page 276 which means that I have less than 100 pages left of this to read and I'm still absolutely loving this book, you guys. I wasn't expecting it when I dove into it, but now I just can't get enough of it. I'm like, I need to read this. I need to, I just need to know how it ends. And I'm just, I love it a whole lot. I think my favorite character is Victor as of now. I do really like Sydney as well, but I think my favorite character is Victor. I just love the sass and like, I don't know. There's something about Victor that just gets me. And I cannot wait to know how this ends and I do think I can finish this tonight. I'm actually pretty confident that I'll be able to finish this today so very excited about that. But yeah, so far I would highly recommend it. It's amazing. I wasn't expecting this from a V. Schwab book but this is definitely shipping up to be a five stars read for me. Hi guys, happy Thursday. Now it's time for me to update you guys on a few things that have been going on. The first one of which being I finished Vicious by V. Schwab and oh my god you guys, I don't have words to describe how I'm feeling about this book. It's just it was amazing. The ending was so freaking good. It was a masterpiece. I just cannot believe this. It was incredible. Once again, I really love the fact that this book really blurs the line between good and evil and we really explore like both sides and I just, I don't know, I just really liked it and I love the characters. I love the fact that even though like these characters are all really morally ambiguous and they're really great characters, you still end up growing to love them and caring for them and I don't know I just I really liked it I I'm so glad that I picked this up like yes this was so good I cannot wait to read the sequel that means that I have officially finished my transfiguration exam so that means that so far I have passed two owls so that means that as of now we have an acceptable for our owls which is great so I'm still hoping to get um, at least an exceeded expectations, which I think is complete six owls. Um, I'm still gonna aim to finish all 12. And I realized when I was filming my TBR that some of the books that I chose for the rest of the month are books that I could count towards my owls. I don't know why, I didn't think that everyone would go for all 12 owls, but now I kinda wanna do it as well. Try At least try it. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to achieve all 12, but like, at at least try to finish them. So now that I finished Vicious, that means that I can continue reading Once Upon a Dream if I want to by Liz Braswell for my Ancient Runes exam. But it, to be honest, I'm kind of in the mood to read like a contemporary, so I might pick one of those up. But now I have some book mail. So 
I just thought that we would unbox it together and I should be receiving more book mail today but it's not here yet so I just thought that I would show you guys a box that I got yesterday from Indigo Chapters so let's do this okay I don't know if this is going to be satisfying or not <laughs> epic fail you guys are going to be like really Emily you bought this but yeah so you know how I finished Illuminae last week right well when I finished the book, I was like, I need the rest of the series. So I got Gemina and Obsidio by Amy Kaufman and Jake Kristoff. Yeah, I don't think I'll be reading them just yet, but I just really wanted them. And they're like so pretty. Like, Gemina is really thick. Like, Illuminate was pretty thick, but I think this one is bigger. And I really love the blue. It looks amazing. Ooh, I like that. I cannot wait to dive into this. And then we have Obsidio, which is a bit thinner than the previous two books but that doesn't mean it won't be good oh my god look at this so pretty wow i love it so yeah i got these bad boys and i am just so excited to be able to read them soon but now as for today i am working from 11 30 until 2 30 and then i'm working from 5 15 until 8 15 which i hate i shouldn't have taken that extra shift but too late hey guys so i just got off from actually that's not true i just stopped by the mall to drop a parcel at the post office for the darkest mind um giveaway winner by the way megan if you're watching this i'm so sorry i don't know why it took me so long but but uh, yeah i also had lunch because i didn't really have anything to eat before then so i had that i don't know why i'm really out of breath <laughs> anyway i still have some time to kill before my next shift so i just thought that we could go to the bookstore together i haven't been to a physical bookstore in like forever and this bookstore that i'm about to go to like pretty much the only one in my hometown it well it doesn't really have a big english section uh for those of you who don't know i am from quebec canada i live there and um well most of the books are in french because that's the main language here so yeah i would rather go to indigo chapters which is like my favorite bookstore but we don't have one here so yeah i just i, I don't even want anything i just want to go see what's in store and i just thought that maybe i could show you guys around a little bit we'll see if there's like a lot of people and like if employees tell me that i'm not allowed to film but we'll try to get some aesthetically pleasing footage <laughs> So I made it home obviously and I did end up buying some stuff at the bookstore I wasn't going to but you know what I want to support my local bookstore and I feel like if I buy stuff from there they might carry more English titles because I don't know I don't know really I'm just justifying my purchases I bought two books and I got an unboxing right here that I'll show you guys afterwards so let's start with the bookstore stuff the first book that I got is Enchanté by Gita Gita I'm not sure how I pronounce her first name but Jolice and I've heard great things or well when it came out I've heard great things about it but now it's kind of like the hype has died down but it's supposed to take place during the French Revolution and the cover is really pretty and the synopsis sounded interesting I do feel like it's going to be something that I might really enjoy especially since it takes place in France and during the Versailles era like with Marie Antoinette and Louis XIV and I just I don't know I'm intrigued and I cannot wait to dive into this. The next thing that I got is a graphic novel and initially I wanted to get Fence but they didn't have it they don't carry it in store and uh I don't know they didn't have it so I just decided to buy something else. So I got The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wong I don't know I've heard great things about it apparently it's very queer I'm not sure if that's true though I've heard that it's queer but I wouldn't like don't hold me accountable um, but like the artwork looks so pretty and colorful and I've been wanting to read more uh, graphic novels and I just realized that both of these are set during the same era sort of so interesting I think they're both set in France is that is that a thing yeah Paris I like that they didn't really, like I didn't even realize it while I was in store but yeah, I've heard that it's super cute and I just cannot wait to read this. Okay, so now that we've talked about the bookstore stuff, let's do a little unboxing and you might be able to guess um, what this is or maybe you won't be able to tell at all. So let's try to open this but like make it work this time. 
no, it's gonna be an epic film. And when I saw it at the bookstore today, I was like, no, Emily, you don't buy a copy because you already have one waiting at home. But it is The Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Shu. I'm like, oh my god, this is so pretty. It's a bit thinner than I had anticipated. But wow, let's look at it naked. Oh, it's just like plain black. But oh, I haven't even read um, Queen of Air and Darkness or Ghosts of the Shadow Market yet. But I knew I wanted to read this. It's set in Paris. I have a theme going on. I don't know what it is, but I like it. Uh, yeah, it's set in Paris and follows Magnus and Alec. I was just like, yes, please. And... I just wanted my own copy. So that's my little book haul. Um, now it's about 4.15 um, and I have to leave for work in about half an hour. <sighs> I don't wanna go back to work. I feel like I went, I shouldn't have to go back, but it's my own fault. And also I accepted a shift tomorrow. I'm gonna be working all day. I don't even know why I did this. Like after I, I accepted, I was like, why do I do this to myself? But it's fine. Um, we accepted, so we're gonna do it. Hi guys, it is now Saturday, and I know I haven't updated you guys in a hot second, but I did manage to read another book uh, yesterday, actually. I read one book in its entirety, and that's Always Never Yours by Emily Wiberly and Austin Sigmund Broca. I never know what's his name. But uh, this was my pick for herbology, as you can see. Sorry, okay. It has um, flowers on the cover, so decided to pick that for it. Okay, so in this book we're following Megan and Megan is the girl before. She, like the guys she dates always end up breaking up with her and finding the one after they date her. So Megan is used to it, she knows the drill by now, but she's still hoping to, you know, maybe have a real relationship someday. When Juliet gets casted as Juliet in the school production um, of Romeo and Juliet, she finds out her life take an unexpected turn and then she gets closer to this guy Owen who is helping her get the boy that she likes and in return he's helping her understand Rosalind the character in Romeo and Juliet because basically Megan is kind of Rosalind you know she's kind of the equivalent of Rosalind so this helps um, Owen like understand the character for his play and it's it's just a great deal and they become friends and then eventually things take a different turn of course but yeah I have been reading this last night I read this in its in its entirety last night and I really enjoyed it you guys um to be honest I cried for like three hours while reading this like the entire time I took to read this I was crying basically I don't know if it's because like I said I've been in a really weird mood and I was an emotional mess because the book in itself isn't really sad but for some reason I really resonated with Megan like she and I have nothing in common but the idea that Megan feels like she is not good enough, she's always replaceable in her mind. The idea of like being replaceable and just like not fitting in with the ones that you love. Like Megan feels really out of place with her family and even with her friends sometimes. Like she feels like her friend, her friends, plural, <laughs> she has more than one friend. Um, they don't really understand her because they don't date like she does I guess they don't really understand what she's been through and they just Megan puts on this front for other people but people don't really know her, like the real her except for Owen I really related to that like feeling like you're not good enough that you're easily replaceable and that you just don't fit in with the people that you love I just really related to that and I think that's why I cried so much while reading this but I really enjoyed this one it's really cute I love the fact that it's very different from a typical YA novel I mean Megan is not your typical YA girl she's I feel like in YA contemporaries we always read about this shy girl who dreams about being with this popular guy and then eventually she gets a guy you know but this one is quite different, like Megan is quite popular even though like she's not the most popular girl at school but she still like has a big group of friends, she's really well known, like she has something going on and she's also like very like flirtatious and she's not ashamed of being who she is, like she has a reputation and she doesn't mind and like Owen is like kind of like your typical YA girl, I mean he writes, he um he's more shy and reserved and I just I don't know I really like that I also really like the diversity of characters like we have a side character that is black and gay we have Owen who's Asian like we had a big diversity of characters and I just I really like that and I also love how sex positive this book is like yes there's like sex involved and it's not like super descriptive it's not like smut in any way it's just that like Megan has had sex before and like people at her 
in our school have had sex before and like it's mentioned in there here and there and just like I love how it's not shamed in any way like she's not slut shamed I don't know I just really liked the message of this so overall I really enjoyed it I've been rambling for long five minutes but whatever um but I really enjoyed it and I gave this one a four out of five stars so that means that I've completed three exams for the owls and I've really not been reading as much as I thought I would. I think I was getting into a reading slump after finishing Vicious and I was in the mood for a contemporary so I'm glad I picked Always Never Yours up. It was really good. Today I am going to work at 11.30. Right now it's like, I don't even know what time it is. I hope it's not too late. Let's check. <laughs> um it's 10 50 so i have to leave for work in like 20 minutes hey guys today is sunday and since this vlog is already long enough i just i think i'm just gonna sign off this vlog and before we do that though i just want to recap everything that i've read this week so the first book that i read is vicious by v.e schwab i read this for my transfiguration exam i really enjoyed it and i gave it a five out of five stars the second book that I read this week is Always Never Yours by Emily Wiberly and Austin Sigmund Broca. I read this for Herbology and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. Finally, I decided to start reading Cinder by Marissa Meyer last night. Um, currently, I am on page 186. I'm reading this for Divination, which is a book set in the future. And, well, I don't have a reading for it yet, but it is a reread for me and it is one of my favorite books. So I'm very excited to be back into this world. So thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed if you did make sure to give this a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe if you're not already i will be vlogging for the rest of the month so you can be looking forward to new owls readathon vlogs and i guess that's it and i'll see you guys in my next video bye